All right, we're talking about solving problems with a tangent ratio, and in this one, we'll, we'll see how to find the angle. And I'll solve the problem and show you how to solve it, and also make some comments about the technique, how to do this quickly and accurately. Okay, remember the definition of the tangent. The tangent of theta is always the length of the opposite side over the adjacent side. So apply that concept to this triangle, and we get this. We get the tangent of theta is 8.4 over 5.2. And if we do that on the calculator, if we divide that 8.4 divided by 5.2, watch this, 8.4 divided by 5.2, we get 1.6, let's round that to 1.615. So the tangent of theta is equal to 1.615. Okay, now we're not going to take the tangent of this. I'm saying the tangent of theta, the tangent of that angle in degrees, the tangent of that many degrees is that. So if the tangent of theta is 1.615, then theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 1.615. And we can do that on the calculator. Theta is going to be the inverse tangent of 1.615. So we pull up inverse tangent and type in 1.615. And that should give us the angle in degrees. And it comes out to 58.23 degrees. So that's our answer. Okay, now the main idea here, and this is important, if you know the tangent of the angle is a certain number, then the inverse tangent of that number will give you the angle. Now a few things to take note of. First of all, going from this to this, isn't hard but it it does confuse a lot of students so let me show you one other way to think about that watch this the tangent of theta is 1.615 okay let's just do this the tangent of theta is 1.615 if you can't remember how to find theta think about this imagine doing the inverse tangent of both sides so I'm going to do the inverse tangent of the left side so the left side becomes the inverse tangent of the tangent of theta and the right side becomes the inverse tangent of 1.615. So one thing you should definitely remember is the basic algebraic fact that you can always do the same thing to each side. And in this case I've taken the inverse tangent of each side. And you should recognize that the inverse tangent and the tangent cancel each other out. Just like squaring something and square rooting something. If I square something and square root it, I'll get that original something because squaring and square root are inverse operations. Same thing happens here. If I take the inverse tangent of the tangent of something, I just get that something because the inverse tangent and the tangent undo each other. Those are inverse operations. So the left side just becomes theta and theta equals that, the inverse tangent of 1.615. So if you have something like this and you can't remember how to solve for theta, you can think of this as doing an inverse tangent on each side. And that gets us to here. Theta is the inverse tangent of 1.615 and that we do on the calculator. Now before we leave this, let me make another important point. Look at this calculation that we did right here. 8.4 divided by 5.2 and we got 1.615. It's better to not do that calculation. We know that the tangent of theta is this, so theta must be the inverse tangent of this. And instead of dividing this and getting 1.615, it would be better to do it like this. Theta is the inverse tangent of 8.4 over 5.2. Okay, We can type it into the calculator like that. Okay, and watch this. If I do this, if I do the inverse tangent of 8.4 divided by 5.2, I get 58.24. A little bit different answer, 58.24. Okay, now which one of these is right? Well, they're both the same out to three digits, but which of these is correct here? This one, it turns out, is a better answer. I might be able to see why. 
you might remember that when we did this division right here, we rounded this number. So the number we were putting in right here when we did the inverse tangent of 1.615 isn't completely accurate. That digit right there has some error in it. That's a rounded digit. So this ends up being not quite as accurate. If you do it like this, the calculator internally solves this in two steps. It does this division, gets a number, and then takes the inverse tangent of that number. The calculator does these two steps that we did. It does the division and gets a number and then does the inverse tangent of the number. But the calculator doesn't round when it does this division. It will do 8.4 divided by 5.2 and it will take this number to as many digits of accuracy as it can deal with internally in its own memory and circuitry. And then it will do the inverse tangent of that. So this is one, this is a little bit more accurate, gives you a more accurate answer, but you're also less likely to make a mistake. This is one step here instead of two. If you can reduce the number of steps in a problem, you typically reduce the number of opportunities you have to make a mistake. So when you do this division, you might just make an error typing that in or transcribing the number. The possibility of doing that is removed if you just type it in there instead and don't even see this intermediate value. So when I'm, when I'm working these problems, uh, for purposes of instruction, sometimes I will show this step, uh, but most of the time I will just put the values in and let the calculator handle them internally like that. That's better, it's faster, it's more accurate, and less error prone.